We are back. We are continuing on with the rest of Act 3 of the Vine Lisa Festival. I did do a little cut from the last stream to this one. Continuing on, I do want to finish up this Mondstadt, like, big corporation, like, salesman quest line and try to, like, make as much money as I can off of the stock market before we finish up and find out about Razor's parents. So we're going to try to do this. It's voice acted. There's a lot of characters that I think are going to be focused. We just saw Barbara a little while ago. So we're getting characters that we haven't seen probably during the actual event story hello sir bernard we got all the funds you need we sold your entire stock already wow you sure work fast gotta be on that paper trail dude everything's in place we just need to open shop now all right our suppliers are ready and waiting uh, just give me a moment what do you think not bad huh of course if you're in a creative mood at any point Feel free to redecorate the place however you want. This looks pretty shitty. For all the work that I just did, this is all the money we have? It's great! Really looks the part! Bro, it looks like a freaking wooden shack. This place looks like shit. The shop definitely needs a name, though. Hmm. How about, uh, Favonian Goodies? Indubitably Pimonial. Pimon will take that as a compliment. Okay, Bernhard, so what do you need us to do next? Gathering the funds was a monumental task. It must have been very demanding. So don't worry about all those other menial things that need doing. Mm. I'll handle those. All right. You both have more experience than me. It'd be great if you could figure out the more managerial level things, like our sales strategy, SOPs, USPs, QC principles, KPIs. What is this? What is going on? SOPs, USPs... QC principles, KP... I don't know what any of this shit means, by the way. All right, I literally worked in food service, and then I became a streamer. <laughs> uh, I've got to be honest. I hear other store owners using these terms, but I can't say I really know what they mean. I just know they're important, which means they're probably best dealt with by you. So in other words, we'll be the shop owners who make the big business decisions, and you'll be the shop assistant doing all the actual day-to-day -day work? McDonald's was the first job I ever had. I worked at McDonald's for six years, and I turned down a manager position because I said to myself, if I take this manager position, I'm never leaving this job. I could get more money, but I've seen enough people, they get to the management position, and then they're like stuck there, and then they feel trapped because they can't go anywhere else because they're a manager here versus going and starting at the bottom somewhere else. I was like, bro, I can't. I can't take that manager position position yep my strength is in execution your shop your rules i am but a tool to be used however you see fit <laughs> okay very selfless um that sounds a little extreme <laughs> yeah this is for charity remember we're not some cutthroat business executives oh your verse is uh very self-aware right here not some cutthroat business executives of a multi-billion dollar gotcha company or anything couldn't be you know, we're just your your humble, friendly neighborhood door-to-door -door salesman that's trying to make it big in the world. We got a little indie company. You know, we're not very well known. All right, why don't you go ahead and take a tight five, Bernhard? The two of us need to touch base on strategy. Okay, we have a clear corporate mission statement. Our goal is to become the best dart snack shop in the whole festival market. Fuck a mission statement, all right? I'm out here to make some money so I don't go broke. Now let's all prepare to give 110 as we receive our first customers. Bro, I am not giving 110% for this shit. You got me fucked up. I'm just trying to do the bare minimum for the maximum return on investment. Traveler? Paimon? Yo! Surprise. Yo! Ah, shit! Yo, you know what? Actually, I'll be a corporate slave to see these two. <laughs> Mona and Fischl, you came to check out the market, huh? Yeah, they don't call me, ask me for directions, Arnold, for nothing. Sheesh. One was wise to follow one's intuition and ask Lady Magistus to join the princess. Oh my, in what is this camera? This festival. <laughs> what is this camera shot, bro? Extraordinary events may yet unfold, even on this unexceptional autumn day. Splendid. Most splendid. Nice to see you too, official. Main Fräulein is battling hard to suppress the euphoria in her voice. <laughs> Seeing you here has put her in the most wonderful mood. She's like, Oz, what I tell you? Oz, spare us your gratuitous embellishments. <laughs> Maybe you should leave me to do the explaining. Hmm. Not long ago, Her Highness had a very nice dream and took it as a sign that something good was about to happen. 
Naturally, Her Highness's first thought was to come to me for some astrological guidance on the matter. She also noticed that the Vine Lace Fest was in full flow and asked if I was interested in checking it out with her. I, of course, agreed. I can take mm. advantage of the festival period discounts to purchase some bulk supplies for my present column writing spree. Yo, shout out to Fontaine. I love that we just saw these two a couple patches ago during the Golden Apple and now they're hanging out again in Mondstadt. God, I'm so fucking happy that we're back in Mondstadt. They, this place has been like abandoned for so long. I must admit, without Her Highness's reminder, the Vine Lace Fest may well have completely passed me by. I love how she's still referring to Fischl as Her Highness. Like, you can drop the role playing, okay? 2.8's already over. Lady Magistus, might Her Highness remind you that the yep. dream of which you speak occurred no less than nine days ago? And that only after awaiting Lady Magistus's return letter. In vain for all this time did one have no recourse but to rap most furiously upon the door to thy abode. <laughs> it's been nine days already? Nine days! Where did the time go? In light of the great importance this manuscript has to you, Lady Magistus, one shall not hold thy inattentiveness to the passage of time against thee. Yeah, what she said. But I would implore you, Lady Magistus, to be attentive at least to the nigh-overflowing mailbox outside your door. There appear to be many others whose letters go What unanswered. the fuck? She's like a shut-in, bro. Like, she doesn't even get her mail? Wow, Mona. You were so immersed in your research that you forgot all about the time, stopped checking your mail, and almost missed out on a huge festival. Jesus Christ. She's like, yo, I'm too busy, like, making my breakthrough research. Sometimes it's important not to be distracted. <clears throat> Disturbed, sorry. Anyway, time is of the essence. I have a lot of bulk buying to do. Speaking of which, it's quite a surprise to see you running your own shop. And a snack shop at that. The most important kind. No! I'm not gonna make a come up on these two, am I? I'm gonna be like, Fischl, Mona, step into my office. Have a look at my fine wares. See anything you like? Oh, actually, we're just helping someone else out. <laughs> Feel free to browse around. Let me think. Uh, can you recommend anything that uh, goes well with a drink? Uh, yes, saving your money. That goes really great with a drink. Sure can. If you got the hangries, then look no further. Just that time I checked the menu. Uh, wait a sec. Goes well with a drink. Wait, you got money to spend on food? Uh-oh. Is the writing going that badly? <laughs> you know drinking isn't gonna solve your problems, right? As it happens, main Fräulein has been visiting Mona quite frequently as of late. It is possible that Lady Magistus is feeling the pressure from the constant interruptions. Damn. Hang in there, Mona. Oh, no, no, it's nothing like that. This has nothing to do with drinking or with Fischl's visit. You all need to calm down. <sighs> She's just thirsty, guys. Recently, Her Highness invited me to try her signature cold cut platter. Uh, sorry, I mean, die Heilige Sinfonie. Die Heilige Sinf It had such a unique taste, and every bite was so sumptuous. Before I realized it, I had mm. finished the entire plate. Yeah, that's her <laughs> signature dish. Wow. Well, an empty plate is the highest compliment you can give to the chef. The Halaga Zinfoni is an excellent dish. It's filling, full of energy, and has a long shelf life. And, if I'm not mistaken, it's often paired with alcohol, yes? What the hell does that mean, a long shelf life? It is, in almost every respect, a far superior dish to the so-called satisfying salad. The sole exception being the steep price. A satisfying salad doesn't make as much of a dent in your wallet, so... Fortunately, however, the Vinlesa Fest is upon us. A festival during which not only are wines sold at discounted prices, but also wine-related food products. This opportunity is a godsend. I cannot let it slip by. Rejoice, Lady Magistus. That dish was but a spontaneous creation, hastily made in a moment of need while on a royal excursion. 
You shall have many opportunities to enjoy far finer culinary delights than this. The dramatic camera snapping is so fucking hilarious. Main Fräulein means to say that this dish represents a mere fraction of her full capabilities. Damn, she's like, I'm the next Gordon Ramsay. But of course, far be it for me to suggest that the true breadth of Her Highness's culinary brilliance can be displayed in a single dish. However, I cannot expect the Sovereign to serve her subject. Uh, what I mean is, I can't keep letting you cook for me when you're a guest in my home. She's like, yo, let me just, let me just move in. We'll be roommates. At the very least, I should have something more than salad in store for when people come around. With any luck, I'll be Damn. able to find something to your taste here. Huh? Mona? Is that really what this is all about? Oh my god, he's letting her guard down, chat! Main Fräulein, might I suggest alternative phrasing that would be more faithful to your style? Perhaps, long had I foreseen this, or <laughs> thou needst not fret over thy affinity for salad. Or, let her say what she wants, Oz, okay? Stay out of this. <clears throat> Most indeed, Lady Magistus. You have long since earned the recognition of your princessin. Devote yourself to deciphering the secrets of the starry sky. You need not spend precious hours in search of additional ways to delight me. I'll cook for you while you do your research. It's what I want. Don't worry. I won't always be as busy as this. It'll be quite nice to work on some other skills when I have the time. Uh, in that case, come on, let's sell them. Goodies to be the solution to your troubles. <laughs> Mona's about to be broke again, ladies and gentlemen. We just made a come up. In addition to our range of ready to eat drinking snacks, we also have a wide variety of semi prep dishes for sale. Why not get a few of each kind? Paimon was born to freaking sell products. Finishing off these ready to cook meals at home is easy as pie, takes no time at all, and can help you improve your cooking skills. You could almost say ready to cook meals at home is easy as. Paimon, get it? Cause... Then, once you have more time on your hands, you'll be ready to challenge yourself with some trickier dishes. We can even come and help if you want. The Traveler is really good at cooking. It'd be no problem. I feel like this is like a HelloFresh ad. What the fuck? Sick of takeout food? Sick of ordering from Good Hunter every other day? Now we have Tavat sponsored HelloFresh. Delivered right to your door and easy to cook. It's easier than cooking Paimon. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> That's a great idea. I'm almost tempted to increase my budget now. Paimon's literally out here making a quick buck. Lady Magistus, your princessin awaits your culinary masterpiece with great anticipation. <laughs> but please keep Paimon's suggestion in mind and allocate your time wisely. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just wait. The next time you dine at my home, I'm <laughs> sure you will be pleasantly surprised. Nice. Yo, she buys the supplies. Thanks for <laughs> Pavonian Goodies has just completed its first sale! Damn, bro, we took advantage of our friends. I feel dirty right now. That's right! And it makes Paimon so happy to see a delighted customer find something that they really like. Paimon's like, yo, I'm in it for the money, dude. Oh, Paimon never knew that selling things to people who need them could feel so fulfilling! Looks like being a shop owner is a pretty cool job after all! He's like, yo, I'm going for that CEO seat. Alright, let's keep up the momentum! and get our name out there. I guess it's for charity, but like, you know, it is what it is, I guess. After your shop has been open, talk to Bernhard to see how your shop is doing. Before every customer flow... Ch we got flow charts? Flow charts. Fucking strategy overviews. I hate all this big corporate speech. Hello, Travel Paimon. You've been participating in the feckin' Hamper event. It was fun. It was pretty fun. Paimon isn't sure if it's because of the marketing during the Vine Lisa Festival, uh, but we got all sorts of decorations. Oh. Okay, so we get to make our own stand in the teapot. I see. I didn't realize they gave us all of that to make our, our stand. That's neat. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we got all of these individual ones. All right, let's go blue. Put the little food stand. I want the balloons. Ooh, I like that. The little food uh, ornament. Let's see what do we got in the bell. I like this. Oh, well, this is what I eventually get to keep. Okay, so I want it to be red. Yeah, this is the one that I want right here. So this is gonna be the final version of it. Ah, uh, this. See, now it looks a little better. Before it looked bare bones as fuck. All right, update on the business strategy. How about the shop? Let's see what's going on here. 
Customer cycle one. Amount of usable funds this cycle. Oh dear. Oh shit. Oh my god. Let's check out our projections and our, you know, our flowchart system and our ROIs and our EPAs and UPSs and USAs and all that jazz. Open for business? I do good? Oh, let's go! Total earnings? Yo, we made a profit, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Next cycle. God, they're like, okay, how much can you work on a budget? This is like the event where we, we made the fireworks, right? We have to get the meter to like hit just right. Yeah, okay, I remember. Okay, now I understand what I'm doing. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I guess I have to keep doing this until I hit my cap of what I need for all rewards. What is this all about? Oh, is this like a perk? Ooh, feedback. <laughs> Honorary Knight, Paimon, good news. We have some new helpers. Good, I can use all the help I can get. I'm over here doing all the work my damn self. These two store owners heard about our charity sale. They want to donate their earnings and join us. Ugh. What? A donation? Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm getting cooked in this festival right now because of their business. If you can't beat them, join them. Each extra donation means one extra person getting the help they need. Both Pauline and I think that's more important than us making more money than we technically need. Mmm, don't screw up my business. This year's Vine Laser Fest is busier than previous years, so we met our target earnings more quickly than we expected. Mm. That's enough for us. It doesn't seem right to leave the important task of caring for our most vulnerable to you alone. We just want to help however we can. Please, it's the least we can do. Helping out in a corporate setting? That doesn't sound very productive or efficient for hitting these business margins, okay? You gotta make as much money as possible. Enough is never enough. Yeah. Aw, this is the warmest, fuzziest feeling ever. This is some bullshit, okay? This isn't the, the cold-hearted corporate environment that I was expecting. Hmm, but this does mean we'll have to change the name of our shop. Uh, how about Favonian goodies and buddies? How about no? Whatever, I guess. All right, let's give this all we've got and make this a charity event to remember. All right, uh, by the way, you guys are, are getting unpaid overtime for wasting my time. Over here for snacks, fresh flowers, and general goods. Folks, <laughs> grab bargains at Favonian goodies and buddies. Yeah, there you go. Oh, shit, my boy! Huh? Hey, look, it's Albino! Oh, my God! Let's go! Uh, hello there. Hello, welcome to... Yo, Albedo, you can literally just fucking create money with a snap of your fingers, so uh, I don't feel bad about asking you for, for some help. Looking to buy anything in particular, Albedo? I'm not in dire need of anything right now. I just heard that you were running the Knights of Avonia stall and thought I'd come over. Aww. As it happens, Timaeus and I made some progress in our research recently, so I took the opportunity to bring you a batch of our finished product. Consider it our contribution to the charity effort. Aww, thanks, man. Aww, so you came all the way here just to help us out? <laughs> That's so nice of you. Let's take a look here. We've got bottles of... Wait. Uh what is this stuff? This is why we don't hire new people. They don't know what they're doing. It's an extra strong sobriety potion that can sober up the intoxicated and alleviate hangovers. Are we selling alcohol? We're underage. We're underage passing. Like, we might be 500 years old, but like, if I can't walk up to a freaking tavern and get a drink, it's because they think or they I appear to be like a teenager or some shit. Please, hand them out for free to anyone who needs them. Having some complimentary items will undoubtedly help you attract more customers. Sounds like a super useful invention. It must have taken you ages. Oh, uh, it must have been a while since I demonstrated my capabilities to you. I most likely wouldn't have had any interest in research like this in the past. But now, I think that it's worthwhile using alchemy to make people's lives easier in small ways like this. Definitely. Well, Paimon assumes so, because Paimon never been drunk before, but plenty of our customers probably have been. Please do not get any ideas, Hoyoverse. The last thing we need is a drunk Paimon. It would definitely ruin the mood if someone fell into the lake or tripped over a rock after having one too many glasses of festive cheer. Yeah, and if they die, we can't get any more of their money, so that would hurt our uh, long-term business strategy. Yeah, 
all, Beto. You should take some snacks back with you and share them with Clee. It's on the house. All right, then. Uh, I shan't refuse. I had no idea you two had such keen business sense. You learn a thing or two along the way. It's a savvy choice of location for selling snacks. There's a festive mood all around, and the division of labor is eminently sensible. Division of labor, that's cute. If any other Knight of Favonius were running the show, it would be a much more, uh, generic operation. Hmm. Wow, getting complimented by Albedo is an amazing feeling! Hell yeah, this dude. This must be how it feels to drink an extra strong sobriety potion when you wake up with a groggy head! Anyway, it sounds like you know quite a lot about running a charity sale yourself, Albedo. Well, I provided a dozen or so landscape paintings for a previous charity event, mm. also run by the Knights of Avonius. Wow, yeah, that's understandable. They must have been worth a fortune! Well, the people buying them certainly thought so. I still have the Paimon portrait, dude. That's literally a, worth a fortune. Some felt that my painting style was a rare one worth investing in, and offered a large sum of money for each work. Yeesh, yo, Albedo's out here making bank. This, plus the sizable profits made from auctioning some of my still-life paintings, seemed to give Alice an idea. Ooh. She used her personal connections to apply for some sort of certification for my artwork. I believe they oh call my it God. copyright. Oh my God, this is Big Corpa strikes again. Oh my God. First it's copyright, then it's DMCA. Okay, Alice has to have been to our world. She literally came to our universe and learned about copyright, copyright infringement. Later, many artists began to imitate my landscape paintings and they became a common sight throughout Mondstadt. That sounds According familiar. The rules of the copyright that Alice applied for, <laughs> the artists need to pay me a portion of their revenue for each <laughs> landscape painting of this style that they sell. <sighs> I fucking hate this so much, bro. I didn't play Genshin Impact to remember my reality. YouTube has a very similar thing where if you like watch or react to someone's copyrighted work on YouTube, they have the choice of taking the earnings that you make from that video. The alternative is they strike your channel or they take you to court. But some people are like, oh, you wanna watch my stuff? That's cool, I'll just make the money off of it. You can get the views and the subs and the comments and all that. So it's kind of like a symbiotic relationship, but I, I didn't wanna have to think about that while playing an immersive fantasy game like Genshin Impact. Thanks a lot, Alice. Wealth was never one of my goals. I don't care where the money goes, so. I entrusted it to the Knights of Favonius and let them manage it. The Knights didn't exactly earn that either. I suppose it would be fitting to use it to pay for the destruction that Alice has created. <laughs> What's next, NFTs? But from what I hear, they use it all on charitable initiatives, which is also a noble cause. Good God, I can't, I can't do this chat. I might have to drop Genshin Impact forever. <laughs> oh man, I've never participated in a charity sale. You never cease to amaze, Albedo. Though it was hardly my original intention, I have come to embrace my unexpected philanthropic achievements. Hey, I want to learn to paint. And I am only too happy to share my expertise with you. <gasps> However. Practice is the most essential factor. Damn, he's like, uh, I'd love to help you, but you need to help yourself, buddy. He made some snacks for Albedo to take uh, back with him. Well then, I will be returning to the workshop. I wish you and the shop all the best. I'm so happy I got to see him. Thanks for your contribution, and good luck with your research. Come again when you're free. Keep a lookout for Sus Beto out there, okay? We know he's out there scheming. Wow, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. Holy shit. Speak to any of the store owners at Favonius Goodies and Buddies to check how the shop is doing. Uh, the three shops, oh, okay, so, oh, they run simultaneously. Hog. Oh, damn, yo, we just fucking expanded. We're that big corporate entity that's moving in on all of the freaking mom and pop shops. We're gonna clean out Mondstadt. <laughs> We just fucking expand it. Like we started off as like a little small thing and now we're expanding and now we're encroaching on all of the other custom, all the other freaking business owners. This is awful. Oh God. Oh God. I gotta run three businesses. Okay, hold on. You know what? I'm about to hit that employee of the month status. Let's fucking go. GG, 
easy clap. All charity sales targets reached 1,097,368. Ooh, I get my crown. Yo, Pog Champ. That's my freaking employee of the month crown right there, by the way. <gasps> you are Amber. You're Look at the synchronized walk between them two. Jesus. All right. Yeah, they're like, hey, we're back from our skinny dipping in Dragon Spine. Uh found you huh wait uh, you came here looking for us yep of course do you have any idea how popular your charity stall is everyone's been talking about it it's good to see these two again as well favonian goodies and buddies run by the honorary knight and their sidekick selling all kinds of fantastic treasures and even giving away some wonderful others for free don't miss out. For free? Who's giving out products for free? This ain't no charity case. Even if it is one, I'm trying to make bank. Uh, so after all that, Paimon's back to being the sidekick? Mm. <laughs> Still, Paimon's really happy to hear that people are giving good reviews. Anyway, what have you two been up to these days? Did you go off on a trip or something? We haven't seen you around the whole festival. Mm, goddamn Eula. <laughs> That's because we're still working. Huh? You still have to work? You don't get any time off during the festival? Bro, that shit's the absolute worst. Technically, Amber and I are on a vacation schedule. There are more merchant caravans than usual traveling the route between Dormanport and Mondstadt City during the festival. Extra traffic means extra security is required. Because of monsters and bandits and stuff? Oh, I see. Yes. The Reconnaissance Company is tasked with patrolling this route during the festive period. I wonder if we're gonna see Mika again. As well as traveling with the caravans to ensure essential goods are delivered without incident. We have to investigate suspicious locations to eliminate any emerging threats. <sighs> that seems like a lot of work. Sounds like you'll be working non-stop around the clock right up until the end of the Vine Lisa Fest. Of course not. We take shifts. While one team is on duty, another is resting, and a third team is on standby in case of emergencies. All right. These three teams rotate periodically. Yule is such an experienced captain. She arranged everything this way so that the reconnaissance company can meet the intense demand during the festival, while still giving everyone a chance to take some time off. Gotta say, great organizing, Yula. I don't know if any of you guys hear it, but like, there's something wrong with Amber's like lines like i feel like her voice is kind of peaking in the recording certain words that she says it might be my headset or it might be like i don't know what it is but it, there's like a popping noise whenever she like pronounces her s's and it's like very noticeable yes all right amber i did my job like i always do i really don't see what the fuss is all about captain eula you're an inspiration to us all enough both of you the festive spirit is turning you into giddy little children <clears throat> Anyway, we didn't come here just to chit-chat. I'll let Eula do the honors. Okay. Oh. I need 40 portions of Night Special Northern Smoked Chicken and 40 of Favonia's favorite pile up Jesus Christ, for what? That's such a huge order! <laughs> What's the occasion? Are we having another party? Wait, are the Knights of Favonia's having an official feast? How come nobody told us about it? We're too busy making freaking bank. <laughs> Nothing quite as glamorous as all that. Captain Eula wants some supplies to reward her team members with. Mm. Correct. Scouts use up an enormous amount of energy in a single day. Each meal, they eat enough to feed... Mm, Jesus. Four to five normal people. Plus, a long-standing member has recently returned to our ranks after a long absence. Mika! I thought it would be fitting to celebrate the occasion. That's nice of her, as the captain. Of all the things I could have bought, I thought it would be best to have the money go to you. That way, I can support a charitable cause while I'm at it. Paimon agrees. You made the right decision, Eula. It's what we business owners call a win-win situation. Actually, you know what? I'm going to mark up this cost by 30%, and then I'm going to give you a 20% discount. And uh, you know what? Long story. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how Dory, Dory's like insistence on making money literally just paid off for me. I just made a come up. Also, about this long-standing member you mentioned, is it that guy we met recently? Mika, the yeah. frontline land surveyor. He was a vital member of our team before the Grandmaster borrowed him for the expedition. Mika! Yeah, that's the one! Paimon never would have thought that shy little guy was such a strong knight! But he seems scared of us. Mika's not afraid of you guys. That was his way of showing respect to you. 
Although, admittedly, it is kind of a roundabout way of doing it. Kind of like Eula, she's like, ah, revenge will be mine, aka I actually really like you. He thinks all mighty people have unique personalities and prefers to understand what makes them tick and the way they think before properly interacting with them. Ah, uh, he doesn't know about us yet. He says it makes it easier to communicate that way. He was the same way toward me and Amber at first. As we gradually got to know each other, he started acting more naturally. Interesting. Mm. Sounds like Mika's the one with the unique personality. The Traveler will remember that. Mm-hmm. It'll just take a little time, that's all. You are a high-profile figure within the Knights of Favonius. Mm. As his commanding officer, I have a duty to make sure no misunderstandings arise between you. Uh, it's all right, Eula. That's fine. We get it. You're just looking after him. Wait, Eula, did you just pay for my portion too? How dare you! I was supposed to pay for mine separately. I'm not an official member of the reconnaissance company. Uh, you realize you're my girlfriend, right? <sighs> if you want to get official about it, then fine. It's officially my treat. There, now stop worrying. Eula, how could you? How could you spend money on me like that? Thanks to Eula and Amber, we made a whole day's worth of more. Hell yeah, bro, we made that come up. Honorary Knight, Paimon, I have the most wonderful news. Thanks to your sterling efforts, the funds we've raised in this charity sale have blown our original predictions right out of the water. It's a phenomenal success. This is gonna suck next year when you don't beat those projections, but you know, enjoy it while you can. Paimon told you so, we're good at this stuff. Good job, everyone. Ah, uh, but you two deserve all the credit. It's your expert management that made this event what it was. I've handed over all the revenue to the person responsible for managing our charitable funds. Alright. And with that, the event finally comes to a close. Woohoo! Yo, we just took a corporate class in Genshin Impact. Make of that what you will, you know, for better or for worse. As a gesture of our appreciation, we'd like to give you both a fee for all your hard work. You've more than earned it. After this, I feel like I could even run a shop of my own in the future. <laughs> mm. Maybe we'll get the chance to work together one day. Maybe. We accomplished a lot together. If the chance ever comes up, let's do it again. You know, I like novelty. I do not want to do this again. I'm just going to be honest, all right? I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Let's see, wrapping things up. I think that was it. I think that's everything. Manage shop. Oh, my God. Damn, Paimon's eating good. Look at her, dude. All right, all of the big corporate stuff out of the way. We are getting back into the act three of the story quest, Aroma of the Past. The knights have provided Razor with the ingredients he needs and preparations seem to almost be complete. Head over to the Knights of Favonia's headquarters to check them out. Ooh, here we go. Hmm, Paimon wonders how Razor's class has been going. Quote unquote class. Uh, Sucrose, wait. Oh, Noel and Sucrose. Oh my god, this is Noelle's first time in a story event! That is fucking insane. Noelle has been in the game since day one. She's one of the free characters the game gives you. You know what makes this worse? They featured Noelle in a cutscene of Windbloom Festival, even though she was never in Windbloom Festival. I don't know. It, it was weird, like, but yeah, this is the first time she's been in anything substantial outside of her hangout. Noelle, a maid of the Knights of Favonius, also is known as a gentle and reliable woman who can be called upon to help in times of trouble. Noelle rejoiced when she was given a responsibility to be seen as a big help in a difficult situation to be able to help people in trouble to lend others her strength this in her mind is in line with the principles of chivalry indeed noelle dreamed of becoming a full knight in order to realize this dream she has been working hard honorary knight paimon please stop her oh my gosh sucrose where you going uh oh Whoa, you scared paimon why are you running why are you running why are you running let's get the two of you so worked out What's going on? Sucrose and I agreed to present the wine ingredient to you together. But when she heard that Razor will be showing up, she insisted that she won't spend a moment longer here than she has to. Oh, is she afraid of, like, wolves or something? I... I'm not good at dealing with strangers. Ah. Uh... Anyway, as long as the ingredient gets into the right hands, that's all that matters. Oh, that won't do. We worked on this together, and we should present it together. I can't take credit for what you did. This is incredible. Noelle's interacting with other characters besides us and Cyrus. It's not about the credit. Wait, so does this mean the Knights of Avonius's ingredient is a product of bioalchemy? Hmm. Yes, it's a quadruple sweetness sunsetia. Oh, there it is. Is this Defender's will? Noelle's the Defender? Quadruple sweetness? 
Damn. But aren't regular ones sweet enough as it is? Also, why is Sincedia? <laughs> Sincedia's are old as fuck. Okay, um, let me give you the full story. I love the scent of wine. And after reading up on the art of winemaking, I have grasped some of the key principles. Okay. In short, whatever ingredients you use, it's essential to include something sweet. In an attempt to select the most suitable ingredient, I gathered samples of all the sweet plants and fruits I could find in the Mondstadt area. Okay. Then, I tried them all in turn and took detailed notes. I also factored in the differences between the same ingredient grown in different locations. For instance, sweet flowers from Springvale are a little sweeter than those at Cape Oath. Zhang Li would love this conversation right now about, like, the process of crafting different types of wines. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. It was no problem at all. Just my duty as a maid of Favonius. The chance to source the Defender's Will on behalf of the Knights of Favonius <laughs> Defender's will! is a huge honor for me. Let's go. Noelle, your eyes are sparkling. Nice. But Paimon thinks it could be because of Lisa's brainwashing. Paimon, shh. Um, anyway, I, I was worried that my evaluation would be too subjective if only I were involved. Thankfully, I ran into Sucrose the other day on her way out of the lab. Nice. Oh no! What is it, Sucrose? I just remembered why I left the lab that day. I was supposed to go and fetch some lab equipment we imported recently. Damn, you got distracted? Oh. It's like... Yikes. Uh-oh. That look on your face seems to say you forgot all about it and have been in the lab this whole time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. <sighs> Don't worry about it. It's my fault, really. I'll go and see Marjorie about the equipment shortly. Carry on, Noel. All right. Oh, okay. Anyway, Sucrose is a true professional when it comes to this kind of research. I showed her my list, and she made some extremely valuable suggestions. Please, you don't need to go out of your way to compliment me. Yeah, you deserve it. Noel filled me in on the background of the whole situation. I was moved to see how seriously she took this task, even though she'd never even met Razor before. However, None of the potential ingredients she had identified were perfect candidates, mm -hmm. in my opinion. What we needed was a fruit high in sugar and easily fermentable. After a final look at Noel's list, Incedia. I picked the Sensedia sample from near Cider Lake as a basis, with a view to improving it. Using bioalchemical techniques, we were able to amplify the sweetness, then conduct a few tests to compare the results against the benchmarks. Watching Sucrose work on an experiment when she's in the zone blew me away. Such focus and determination. Jesus. I, I already said don't compliment me. Noelle, that's strike two. Strike three and you're out of here. Anyway, the result of our research is the Epsilon series Tetrasweet Sensedia, variation 63. And it's finally ready. The sweetness has been verified through rigorous testing. Oh my god. And the size and color are both optimal, too. They said Epsilon. Y'all know what that means. Noel shortened the name to Quadruple Sweetness and Sedia. Unfortunately, it can't be produced on a very large scale under the current conditions. But as long as we have enough for Razor. Y'all went above and beyond. Jesus Christ. This is more than sufficient. Traveler, there's something else I'd like to share with you. Okay. Growing up, I was lucky. I was never the best at dealing with other people, but my parents never placed any expectations on me. You are lucky then. They never said to me, you need to be more sociable or anything like that. They just said I should do what I enjoy. So I'm well aware that I'm one of the lucky ones. I haven't lived Razor's life, and I can't pretend to imagine what it must have been like. So I don't know how much it will mean coming from me, but... I truly hope he can find happiness and spend his life doing what he loves. Aw, that's so nice. Oh, so gross. <laughs> She's like, all right, that's it. I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> Sorry, I am late again. Oh, Razor spooked her, dude. Holy moly. Yo, she dipped. Teacher forgot about the time. I kept talking and talking. That's all right. We were just chatting. Whoa, deja vu. Uh, Paimon said the exact same thing two days ago. 
Damn, are we stuck in another fucking samsara? I swear to God. Where's the beeping? I can hear it. Where did Sucrose go? Yeah, Sucrose was like, uh, new person? No thanks. Wow. She disappeared the moment he opened the door. Hello. I'm Noelle. Maid of the Knights of Favonius. My gosh, what a great first encounter for Noelle's first time meeting my favorite character in the game. What an honor. Hi. Aw. Here's our ingredient for you. Oh, but I can't take full credit for it. I had help from an alchemist, but right now, she, uh... Um... She's a little busy with work. Right, yes. It's a shame she couldn't be here to present it to you in person. <sighs> Smells like mm. potion, nectar, and... Animal crystal fly, right? Nice. Wow, nothing gets past your nose, does it? <laughs> you could almost say Razor knows what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh man, I fucking love this. <laughs> this Sunsetia is sweeter than ones I have smelled before. Klee said alchemy is amazing. It can make things better. Bro, I'm channeling my love for Sino. I didn't realize how good I was at this until Sino came out, honestly. That's right. I hope that this sweet fruit will help you brew the sweetest wine. The alchemist girl also had a message to pass on. Spend your life doing what you love. Thank you all. Aw, yo, thank you, my boy. When she has time, I want to thank her also. Leave that to me. I'll figure out a way to persuade her to, uh, <laughs> to not work so hard all the time so that I can introduce you to each other. <laughs> I save. Okay, I will wait. All right, now that we have all the ingredients, we can finally start making the wine. For that, we'll need a barrel, which, if Paimon remembers correctly, is waiting for us at the Angel's Share Stand. Yep. Bye, Noelle. We're going to head off now. Good luck with everything. See you next time. Enjoy your five minutes of uh, spotlight in Genshin, even though you've been here since day one. Overall, I think this task was a success. Oh no, Sucrose's lab equipment. I should go help her carry it. Oh, damn, Genshin, you literally couldn't have her stick around, could you? They were like, all right, Noel, you gotta leave. You're hogging up all the screen time. Jesus Christ. Oh, bro, everybody's here. Diona! Oh my god, Diano! <laughs> is this her first I time in the story too? Over here! Look who it is! I know she has a hang-up, but I don't know if Diona's ever been in the game before. Wow! It's Diana! I'm always sure we'd run into you at the cat's tail stand sometime, but so far we haven't seen you all festival! Let's go. Ooh, traitors. Damn, you alcoholics! Every last one of you, uh, god damn it! Um, <laughs> what? Oh, I'm so mad! She's like, I'm big mad right now. Y'all sold alcohol? You're my worst enemy. Yeah, there it is, the introduction to Diano. <laughs> Diana, the bartender at the Cat's Tail, hates all alcoholic beverages, but has a rare talent for bartending. No matter the drink, as long as the mixing is in her hands, it will be unimaginably delicious. Her excellent bartend that's so ironic. Her bar excellent bartending skills and her cat ears and tail that runs in her family are popular amongst punters, making the cat's tail extremely popular. However, please take care not to touch Diona's ears or tail when ordering at the bar. If you cross her, the consequences will be dire. We only have gotten one interaction with her in the game, similar to Noelle, and it has been through her hangout, which her hangout was pretty entertaining. I felt like it was a little repetitive, but her hangout is really what made me love her as a character. Like, she cares about her dad, but she hates alcohol and what it turns him into and what it turns people in general into. She gets a little over the top. I, I said it during her hangout. I was like, you want to destroy the wine industry or the alcohol industry? Just have somebody else, like, under the bartending table making the drink for you, and then you just give it to the person. <sighs> she told me the whole story. So, this bright idea was a brainchild of you two? Hmm. How could you? Razor is daddy's friend. And he was a good influence. Right up until you got him interested in wine. Damn, you're gonna turn him into an alcoholic. How could you? <sighs> Razor, you better promise me that you won't turn into one of those old booze hounds that drinks themselves silly slumps over the bar and bursts into tears. I love Diona's performance. I think Diona, I wish Diona was in the game more. I love, 
love, love, love, love, love the performance that the voice actor gives to this character. It's so good. I, uh... I don't understand. Sounds like there's been some crossed wires here. Also, where's Bennett, Clee? <laughs> I love how Clee and Bennett left somewhere together, and then only Clee came back. Like, what, what happened to Bennett? <laughs> Clee, what exactly did you say to Diana? Oh, no. Um, I told her that Razor's looking for his mommy with the honorary knight's help, and you both seemed really sad and said you needed some wine, so maybe Diana could help. I love her smug, like, nope. Fucking Sundere vibes right here. Look at that face. But before I finished, Diona said, Clee, say no more. I'm getting involved in this if it's the last thing I do. And then we came here. Oh, man. I love character impersonations. They're so funny. Uh. Uh. Uh, okay. Hyman doesn't even know where to start. Um, Diona, it sounds like Klee left out a few important details in the story. <laughs> Let us set the record straight. Yeah, he's trying to, like, connect with his parents. So you're saying Razor wants to make the same wine that his mother and father once made? Mm -hmm. So he can learn more about them? Mm -hmm. hmm. You better not be making this up to try to pull the wool over my eyes. Yeah, and don't talk shit about Razor's parents just because they made wine, Diona. We're gonna have some problems. Sorry, Diona. It was all Clee's fault for not explaining it properly. Yeah, I know, right? Leave it to, like, a 12-year-old to explain, like, the inner, like, the complex workings of this entire event. So, are you still mad? Or can you help Razor make the wine? Actually, Diona's probably the perfect person. She would make it... Oh, she would make it exactly like his parents, if not better. She's got the, the freaking, the spring fairies stuff. I caught a bunch of fish for us to eat. Um, uh, and you can pack Dodoko too, if you want. Yo, Dodoko cameo, let's go. I, I wasn't that angry. We're just trying to help. I understand. Yeah, I was just pretending to be angry. I just don't want Razor being led astray, that's all. That's why I may have raised my voice a little bit just now. <laughs> well, since none of you plan on drinking it, then I suppose I can help you just this once, despite my reservations. All right, Diona, playing hard to get over here. But I need you to know that I'm a mixer, not a brewer. Hey. So I'm used to working with the finished product. If you really want me to start with a bunch of raw ingredients, that's fine. But I can't make any promises about how it'll turn out. Oh, shaken and stirred. Yeah, there you go. Yay! Diona is the best! Hey, she said the thing! <laughs> she says that about everybody in her dialogue. Yeah, everyone except D Luke. Yeah. Don't worry, Diona. You got this. <laughs> Bunch of flatterers. Now watch this. Holy moly, the mixology is insane! We're done. That was quick! Ooh. Now we just need to find a place to store it. We wait, wait for a windier, windier day. day. Hmm. Does that mean we need to put it somewhere exposed to the wind? How long would we wait for the wine to mature? Like, how long does it usually take for wine to mature if you make it like this? I feel like there's some uh, God of Time manipulation going on here. If this wine matures like in a couple days, I'm calling Venti Susuke going on. Maybe wind rise? Very windy. Look at that. That's a pun in of itself. Wind rise, you know, because the wind is in the name, which implies windiness. You know, the, the, the razor is learning from Sino even better than I am. Yep. If you say the word windy, that's the first place on every monster's mind. There it is. Cool. I want to come too. I have to keep an eye on my foolish father, so I won't be joining you. Damn. Klee, come and play again some other time. Aww. I will, I promise. Damn, that was so cool to see Diona, though. Like, damn, bro. All these Mondstadt characters that didn't get a first run-in are, are finally freaking getting the spot like they've always deserved. Diona's a 1.1 character, by the way. And it's just kind of ridiculous that it's been that long since she's been in the story for the first time. Same thing with Noelle. Noelle's a day one character. She had her own banner. If you started the game, you've pulled on the Diona banner unless it's still there that you haven't done. But, like... Eesh. Speak of the devil. If the devil was an Archon, that is. 
I don't know. Oh, this is a little. What a curious coincidence. This is a little Sasuke here. chat. <laughs> Menti's right where we want him to be. Tone deaf bard. Yeah. What are you doing here? It's like he knew. Well, I awoke to the most magnificent aroma in the air. After following the sweet scent of fresh fruit to its source, mm. this is where I ended up. But you were here before us. Yeah, the fruit is super fresh and super duper sweet. I can smell it as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's another reason, isn't there? Yes. Oh, uh, I remembered something important. Something that you have to do before sealing the barrel and burying it in the ground. Oh, you gotta bury it? What the fuck? What? We missed something? Razor. Do you still remember the scent of that half bottle of Thousand Wind wine? Mm. I believe there was a hint of bitterness in there. Was it his tears? Yes, there was. <laughs> and with very good reason, too. The source? This. Dandelion seeds. Oh, uh, of course. You know, a freaking splash of dandelion seeds and You're everything. You're familiar with dandelion wine, right? Well, the people of Mondstadt believe that the wind can bring back the soul and also preserve memories. Mm. Dandelion seeds are like living gemstones, formed from the first wisps of wind in the year. People add them to the mix at the last second as a way of capturing the wind in the very moment that the barrel is sealed. All right, we're gonna need dandelion seeds to communicate with Istaroth in the future. The memory of that moment is then memory. stored in the wine for all time. And we just made a freaking leyline wine capsule. So, Thousand Wind Wine is the original dandelion wine. Oh. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty rich lore for Mondstadt. That's so cool. So now our story will be made into wine too. Why does Venti always try to get dandelion? I wonder if there's a reason why Venti's always trying to get a bottle or two of dandelion wine from D. Luke. There has to be like significance to that, to those wines in particular, like lore wise. I don't know. Like, again, I don't know if it's a connection to Istaroth or if it's just like a, a way of remembering the memories of his friend, like the nameless bard. Memory is like a big deal, especially when it comes to like the ley lines, having visualizations of, of moments of the past that seem out every so often, so this is the first time we're hearing about something like that from Mondstadt. As for why it always has a different scent, well, that's because people have the freedom to include whatever ingredients they want. <laughs> yeah, so we got we got everything. We got one from Bennett, Rosaria, Sucrose. Hmm. What is it, Razor? What you thinking about? In Mother and Father's Wine, I can smell dandelion seeds, mm. but I don't know what else. In my wine, there is a lot of friendship. Hmm. I still don't understand my mother and father, but I still have you and everyone else. Aw, that's wholesome as fuck. Everyone has done so much for me. Farka, Teacher, Clee, Bennett, Uncle Brown Cat, Cold Lady, Grown Up with Fake Smile. Is that supposed to be Kaya? Grown Up with a Fake... Oh my god can see right through Kaya. I mean, Kaya's out here, like, holding them emotions in, my dude. Gray, tough girl, person that smells like animal crystal fly, <laughs> Uncle Brown Cat's daughter, Green Bard, Paimon, and Traveler. I remember everyone. Hey, he knows either their name or very good descriptions of them. Making wine is hard work. Making this wine needed everyone working together. True. Hard work with friends? Not so hard after all. I'm... I'm so happy. Bro, I'm so excited. I'm so happy for Razor. We're all glad to help. It makes us happy to see you happy. Thank you. Ah, uh, look at that. Look at that smile. Look at that face. Friends are also Lupacol. Whether I'm human or I'm wolf, it doesn't matter. From now on, all of us are together. When I grow up, we will come back here and we will open this wine together oh my god <laughs> there needs to be like an epilogue of this game when everyone's older and we actually do that i need to see these characters grown up by the end of the game that would be incredible <laughs> what a magnificent monologue even as a bard i don't feel like there's anything else to add all that remains now is to mm. bury the barrel and wait, wait for the fruit to ferment. So I guess they are going to wait it out. I thought we were getting the wine like immediately, but I guess we do have to wait it out. No time hacking from Istaroth. 
group buries the barrel in the ground. We're finally done! Paimon feels like a celebration is in order! Hmm. Um, if Paimon remembers correctly, tomorrow should be wind coming day, right? Wow! The animal god is coming home! <laughs> Damn, Venti's like, hey, I'm a little, I'm a little early. <laughs> uh, that reminds me. I haven't memorized the song for the toasting ceremony yet. <laughs> I'd better get back. <laughs> Friends, I shall see you all tomorrow. Get a good night's sleep tonight. Wait for the whisper of the gentle breeze to rouse you tomorrow morning. Then come and enjoy a performance by the greatest bard to ever grace the streets of Mondstadt. All righty. I'm excited. Ooh, let's go. Okay, observe. Observe the piles of dirt where the wine is hidden. The wine made by you and your friends has been buried. Wait for it to slowly age into a beverage most fine. Gosh, that's so cool. Oh, everyone's here. Hug. Razor, you were so cool back there. Cool. But inside... I feel warm. <laughs> no, not like that. Oh, we took it literally. When you think something's awesome, you can say it's cool or sweet. Or poggers in this day and age. Oh. Imagine that. Mm. <laughs> but I think Clea is sweet. Imagine Razor was like, that was pretty poggers. <laughs> All right, here we go, chat. This is it. I think this is the final sequence of the event. I still have to talk to everyone afterwards, but we are finally here. Oh, damn. Oh, Bennett's back. He didn't die after all. Lisa's there too. Lisa, Razor, Bennett, wow. Lee. So many people have shown up to welcome the animal archon. Uh, huh? Uh, Why is everyone crowded around the angel share stand? Venti's gonna be like, it is I, your animal archon. And everyone's gonna be like, this man's clearly drunk. He has no idea what he's talking about. Tradition holds that the finest wine of the Vinelesa Fest mm. only goes on sale after the Animo Archon has tasted it at the toasting ceremony. Everyone's waiting in line for the big moment. Damn, Venti. <laughs> Venti's like, all right, this is what I've been waiting for. This is actually the whole point of the festival. Ugh. So welcoming the Animo Archon back is just a means to an end for them, huh? What about you, Lisa? Are you here for Razor? Yes, I was feeling a little concerned about him, but I just spoke with him, and he tells me that the winemaking went very smoothly. Ah, <sighs> such a relief. A glass of the festival's finest will go down smoothly now, too. <laughs> wow, you too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Razor and the others are over there. You should go say hi. All righty, I will see you later, ma'am. Hey, hey, there you are. My God, Bennett, you're not dead. Whoa. What's with all these bottles? Selling your own homebrew now? <laughs> oh. These are for Razor, from us. Mommy said that everyone's welcoming the animal god today, and we need to give Whoa. him some wine. If the animal god likes the wine, he'll turn into the wind and bless <laughs> everyone. Whoa, she said that as if Alice recently said this to her. Is she around? What's going on? We want the animal god to be happy, so he helps Razor. <laughs> Oh, honorary knight! Look what Albedo let me borrow! Oh yeah, she probably has a dodo com. Yeah, knowing her. This bottle is from my dad. Luckily, I managed not to break it on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just for show, though. I have to give it back to them afterwards. Mommy said that the animal god can drink a lot of wine. <laughs> she said if he wanted to, he could drink the whole of Cider Lake in one big gulp! Uh, Venti, are you okay? So... Do you think we'd have enough between these and the wine raiser's parents left behind? Ah, Green Bard. Uh -uh. Oh, Jean too. Uh -huh. I am greatly honored to be able to be here today. Uh-huh. I have been invited by acting Grandmaster Jean of the Knights of Favonius to perform a piece for everyone. Thousand Wind Wine. Out of all of the nations, they're like straight up like worshiping their god when their god seemingly has abandoned them or doesn't even like make themselves known, which is why I really do feel like Venti is the strongest of the seven because his nation actually, and he's the original Animo Archon. Like I honestly feel like that's what makes him the strongest is because like his people are worshiping him and that's where his strength comes from, but he plays it off that he's weak. It is some of the finest verse I know. I dedicate it to the wind 
and to everyone here with us today. And he's amongst his people, but they don't even know it's him, so that, that works out even better for them. Fill up the barrels and store them away, then wait, wait for a windier day. My God. Wax the <laughs> bottles, seal them tight, for the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. This is reminding me so much of when Erica, so Erica Harlicker is the voice actor for, for Venti. She did like one of those shant, I forgot what it's called, but she did like one of the, um, soon may the weller men come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. Like she sang that song and that's what this is reminding me of. Yeah, the weller men, yeah. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue as Mondstadt to the ear like a sweet dream of freedom? And what are the fruits that went into the the brew an explorer's courage a love tender and true when venti was saying it like just normally saying it word for word earlier i was like how does this melody go like i feel like this doesn't even vibe well this actually sounds really good a defender's will strong as yesteryear joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer turning sour into sweet bitter notes fade away as we wait wait for a windier day i need to hear a cover of this by erica now pray tell what treasure does this barrel hold tis wheat's greatest triumph the true liquid gold as it flows from the keg, what sound drifts by? Wind chimes in the boundless immemorial sky. We raise up our glasses Woo! and voices in song as we wait. Oh my wait god! For the wind to sing along. Where do we turn once the thousand winds take flight? To the tales of the lyre, to the sweet dream of tonight. Oh my god. Dear friends, let us now open the wines. Jeez, dude! Let's go! Round of applause! I only heard Erica in that. It's like I forgot Venti was even a character. To the Animal Archon! To the Animal Archon! To the Animal Archon. To the Animal Archon. <laughs> um... There's no wind. Oh no! <laughs> The thing didn't happen. This sucks. Don't feel sad, Clee. Venti, where's the wind? You're about to make this girl cry. But why didn't he come? If the animal god didn't come home, is it because he doesn't like the wine we brought for him? I don't think so. Of course not. You know, Clee, the wind isn't the only form that the animal archon can turn into. Yeah. He can turn into anything. <laughs> so today, he must have come back looking like something else. Looking like a tone-deaf bard. Huh? Really? Maybe he turned into a Chumpy Dumpty. Damn. Sure. Chumpy Dumpty it is. Hope you're listening, animal archon. <laughs> You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Racer, get the animal. Oh icon man, that was a that thing? was a good one. That was a funny bit. Yes, I talked a lot with you all, and I learned a lot. Now I am not afraid. I think that is a blessing. Don't forget to save me a glass of your wine once it's finished fermenting. Actually, that's kind of based. By the time that wine's done, we're gonna they're all gonna be old enough to drink. Holy shit, that's so goaded. It will remind us of this moment. Yes. We share together and we remember together. Yay! <laughs> but now I'm getting thirsty. Alright, let's get you your your appy juice. We've all done a lot of talking. Let's go get something to drink, shall we? I heard that the Angel Share is selling a new drink called Fruits mm -hmm. of the Festival. Yep. Everyone's saying it's delicious. I already bought all of them, sorry. <gasps> I want some! I want some! <laughs> okay, everyone, let's go. All right, let's get it. Let's give... Oh, CG animation! Oh, my God! He's so cute! Gosh, she's so adorable! Oh, the wind! Yo, Venti's a little... Venti's, uh... Took him a little while. Please, listen. The wind! You liked it after all. The wind! The animal god is coming! Aww. Oh, the melody, the music? <laughs> oh, the dandelions. 
Bro, this looks so... Bro, the anime is gonna look so fucking good. Damn. Rosaria. Take this, crush it, and place it on the fracture. Who's this? Missy, promise me you'll live on. Oh, what was that? This is where you must stay. Oh, you is this their only hope? Is this all their? Forgive me, Kaya. Ah! Yo, the Kaya's dad. And and that was Varka. I think that was talking to. Was that Varka good, talking? Very good. That's my boy. I will always be proud of you. Master Krampus. Oh my God! I'm losing my mind. <sighs> After all the time we spent on it, the wine still isn't ready. <laughs> May as well leave it for they us. They were then. adventurers! What do you think of that name? Oh, an adventurer's name. Yes, I like it. Razor? Razor? His parents actually named him! So his parents named him and Var I thought he got his name from Varka. Oh my god, that scene was so good. Yo, his mom looks so his mom looked beautiful. Was that Starfell Lake? Not Starfell Lake. That was a uh, Star Snatch Cliff. That's where Marvin and his girl go to now, which is kind of crazy. Who is the dialogue during Rosaria? Was that the bandits that, that raised her or was that Varka? It was her bandit father. Okay, so that was all of their fathers. So that was Rosaria's bandit father. That was Diluc's dad who dropped him off at Dawn Winery. And Master Krepis that was telling Diluc he'd always be proud of him. God, that was so fucking good. <sighs> that might not have been Piero then, because that didn't sound like Piero. A lot of people have been speculating that Piero was Kaya's dad, but that didn't sound like him. So we've actually heard what is what Piero sounds like from the Winter Nights Lazo trailer. So it could be a grandfather, great grandfather, or his great great grandfather that he mentioned from his story quest. What a fucking return to form for Monstat, man! I think we got every single Monstat featured character, which was great. Razor actually had parents who named named him Razor. This changes the preconceived assumption, like the preconceived like information before that Varka named him and taught him how to like, I thought Varka gave him that name. Like his parents were adventurers in the adventurers guild of Mondstadt. They would know Varka. They probably died then. If they're adventurers, like this line of work, there are adventurers that die on the job. So Varka like knew his parents that deeply, not just knew of them, but must have known them for them to tell him what they would name their kid. I wouldn't be surprised then if Varka is Razor's godfather. Yeah, and it also confirmed Confirms that he wasn't willingly abandoned, which I never really believed that. I, I, I never really thought that someone just dropped him off and was like, I, I just felt like that could be something that Razor thinks about if that was the case, but I don't know. I felt like it was too much of a sentimental journey for him to kind of figure out like, oh, I want to learn about my parents, so I'm going to try to make wine because they made wine, and I just think this works out a lot for him. And again, like that moment where he like smells the wine, I felt like that was like a moment that Venti was talking about with like dandelions and they bring back memories. I don't know. That was like a supernatural moment right there that gave Razor a semblance of his parents. All right, so we're going to close this off. But before we do, we have six characters that we have to track down their location. I see Sucrose right here. So we have a bunch of characters that we're going to chit chat with in the open world before we officially close out. But uh, I just want to give my, my overall thoughts. I will say, of course, I loved this event. Razor is my favorite character. Boron Razor is great. 
Learning about his parents was great. Getting all of the tidbits of excitement regarding Varka, who is my most anticipated character in Genshin, was phenomenal. Seeing all of the Mondstadt characters, finally getting some characters that have a showcase like Diona, like Noel was pretty awesome to see. Like this, in general, this was just a really entertaining uh, return to Mondstadt because we haven't been here in over a year, at least for like a Mondstadt focused thing. Overall, I really enjoyed it. We're gonna close out now and we're gonna check out the character's dialogue. Hi there. Are you here to take a look at my stall? Ooh. I have a lot of newly developed research products. Do you wanna chat? Um, okay. Go ahead. About your stall. Oh, this? I actually wrote out all the nutritional information and prices for my bioalchemy products in advance. But the customers still prefer to ask directly, so I just read off the sheet for them. Running a stall is a huge challenge for me. Maybe I could get Noel to interact with the customers, and I do the rest. <sighs> no. Never mind. She's probably busy enough already. Oh no, she probably wants to hang out with you. About your bioalchemy products. I have here the Iota Series Rapid Acting Deep Freeze Mist Flower, the Theta Series Fragrance Enhanced Sweet Flower, Variation 21. Oh my god, Theta and Iota, ladies. Yo, RVB fans, you guys know. And the Epsilon Series Tetra Sweets and Sedia. Epsilon! Variation 63. I'm proud to put my name to all of these products. Hell yeah, I approve. You won't need me to read out all the details. Right? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not that galaxy brain. About Razor. Go ahead. I'm sorry for running off back then. Oh yeah, she freaking booked it. I just thought that you and Noel would do a better job of expressing things than I could. Did everything work out in the end? Yep. Mixing the Epsilon series Tetra Sweets and Sedia, Variation 63 with the other ingredients didn't cause any problems, did it? You know what's gonna be cool? You know like how Razor like had a whiff of that wine and it reminded him of his parents? It's gonna be so cool that if we get a moment where the characters are older and they dig up the wine and they all have it, it reminds them like we get like a snapshot of this festival when they were all younger. That'd be so cool. Oh, and uh... How did things go with Razor? Pretty sure things went well. Don't worry, everything turned out great. Phew. Thank goodness. Then, <laughs> can I ask you for a favor? I want to make a note of the full recipe for the Thousand Wind wine we made. Okay. That way, we'll be able to recreate the exact same flavor we did today in the future, no matter how many years go by. Nice. Hey, Sucrose is on a mission now. You love to see it. Okay. Sucrose is down. We have five other characters, so I think there are some characters in the city, some on the outskirts, so I do know where all of them are. My mods gave me a list. Lisa is right here. She's on the second floor of Good Hunter, which is a very rare spot to be on. Like, it's like you have to jump across this freaking gap to get over there, so it's a very interesting, uh... <sighs> I'm much more suited to leisurely days like these. You want to chat? I'd love to, cutie. Hmm... Too bad I can't offer you some Ooh, tea. Oh, Varka, do tell. I was quite surprised to learn that the Grand Master had written a private message just for me. Yeah. And I was equally surprised to find out that razor has been on his mind this whole time. He's the Godfather. He's the Godfather. Especially given how demanding he is of Jean. He left her to figure out the whole Vine Lisa Fest on her own yep. and didn't give her a single word of acknowledgement. I'll have to have a stern word with him on Jean's behalf when he returns. What a giga chad. Uh, about Razor. It's funny. I always thought the Grand Master was the one who gave him the name Razor. Same! That's literally in his Razor's character bio, which you guys are going to see pretty soon. At the time of this recording, character lore videos are going to start coming out where I read all the lore for the first time. And when I did that for Razor, I was like, oh my god, he gave Razor a name. He taught Razor how to fight with a, with a Claymore. I thought, like, everyone thought that until this. But it turns out his birth parents chose it all along. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Huh. Anyway, Razor told me he heard the voices of his parents during the festival. Yeah. Like stepping on a rock in the sun. Warm, but also heavy. <sighs> I'm sure he must think of them as both kind and dauntless people. Yeah, they were adventurers. Absolutely freaking top of the line folks. <sighs> Originally, I only planned on having a glass or two. I thought I deserved a treat after being such a good teacher recently. <laughs> But that was before I came to appreciate how truly exceptional the festival exclusive vintage was. Yeah. Before I knew it, I was already rather tipsy. <laughs> oh shit. I'm a bad example. 
Don't be like me, cutie. Yo, she said it. Lisa's bad. All right, Lisa. Always a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to save Razor for last, but I have to find everyone. Okay, the next person is going to be Rosaria, I believe, and she's on the outskirts of the city. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's brooding and looking out into the ocean. So yeah, so she was thinking about her bandit father, the guy who raised her. Hello again. You want to chat? Sure. Did you have something you wanted to ask me about? Varka. Oh, yes, I read his letter. Barbara showed it to me. She'd been so worried about her father, Seamus. Seamus <laughs> Peg. She almost burst into tears when she read that the expedition is safe and all of its members are accounted for. Yeah, so we did find out, I think through the manga, that her father is along with the expedition and he's part of the, the Knights of Favonius Church. Hmm? My thoughts? <sighs> You're curious what he means to me as a father figure, is that right? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm not like other daughters. I can't bring myself to worry about him. He wouldn't be leading that many people if he didn't have the necessary strength and courage for it. I guess that's a good thing, then. He's not the kind of person you need to worry about. That's what I figured. Did you have something you... So, he's finally come to terms with everything? His parents were good people after all. At the very least, he's no longer lost and confused. He has a direction now. Hmm... Sounds like he still has some way to go before he can say he's fully independent. But everyone goes through their own life in their own way. Yeah. Well done. Sounds like your efforts were all worth it in the end. I thought that if I made it to the Vine Lace Fest, I'd have the chance to spend a whole day in the tavern. Turns out there's actually more work during a festival than usual. I managed to escape to here, but I still can't completely let my guard down. <laughs> Who knows when Victoria or Dahlia might show up and drag me off to the sung poetry event. <laughs> Ugh. The sooner this festival is over, the better. Oh my god. All right, yo. Rosaria's like, I hate my job. Let me fucking brood in peace. All right, let's see who's next. Uh, Venti apparently is at Star Snatch Cliff, which is great. That's literally where Razor's parents are, so maybe he'll talk about that. Venti, you really made my ass walk all the way up here, my dude. Look at him. I didn't expect you to come by here. Unless... Hmm. Oh, were you following the fragrance of wine on the wind? You want to chat? Sure. <laughs> the sound of your voice is always a pleasure to hear. Blessing. Blessings? Oh, <laughs> that... Between you and me, I breathed a sigh of relief when nobody said their wishes out loud during the toast. Damn. That would have really put me in a tough spot. <laughs> uh, the animal archon Barbados doesn't have unlimited power, you know. Yeah, you say that. I had to take a really deep breath to get the winds of the far-flung past blowing. I nearly went blue in the face. Dude, I love this landscape view, by the way. Holy fuck, this place looks hella defined. Razor. He's grown up so much recently. Oh, it's such a joy to see. Oh my fucking god, I just realized Celestia's looking at Venti from right here, bro. We're just chilling. They're like, we see you. Huh. Uh, it, suddenly I sound just like an old grandpa. Uh -huh. He was lucky to have friends like you ready to support him through all this. I see a kind, gentle soul with a healthy dose of romance and freedom, too. Uh -huh. In other words, a true monstatter who grew up drinking the water of Cider Lake. You, on the other hand... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you're the gentlest soul I've ever met. Aw, that's so nice. Oh, I've been very busy on that front. <laughs> I'd long since drunk my fill by wind coming day. But, uh, I wasn't counting on everyone bringing out their finest vintage to welcome me. Ah, uh, the fragrance alone was so intoxicating. <laughs> I had no choice but to make room for a few more rounds. Uh, full disclosure, I also secretly hid two bottles away for myself <laughs> at the end. <laughs> to the animal archon, they said. Okay, I just want to express, Celestia is looking at Venti, and Venti is looking out into the sea of the island that worships the god of time. I don't know, man. Venti's so... He's sus every time we see him, dude. Oh, there he is, D. Luke. So... What do you think of the Vine Lace Fest? Hmm. Have you enjoyed yourself? Let's chat. Well, what would you like to know? About Razor. <sighs> I can sympathize with the anguish of being away from family. Hmm. Certainly a tragic situation. But yep. tragedy can also drive personal growth. And perhaps learning how to face it head on is part of growing up. Aww. 
part of becoming an adult. That's uh, drawn from real life experience there with his dad. Having the support of some good friends will certainly make that journey easier. Ah, uh, D-Luke, I love you, man. About the voices. Wait, 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 voices? When I unsealed the wine, it seemed that the words of my uh... late father were sealed inside. So he's talking about everyone. I'm like, how does how does the traveler know about the voices? You know, <laughs> I know that was for us, the player, but I didn't know that was like an in-game thing, too. I wonder what he would think if he were to see me now. Like, hey, you getting along with your brother? Somehow, I doubt he'd share the same view as he did back then. Mm, of course he would. <laughs> if you say so. Your dad will be proud of you. He'll always be proud of you, buddy. To the people of Mondstadt, winemaking is a way of working through emotions, and remembering our history. We're only able to make such high quality wines these days, thanks to the peace we enjoy. Yeah. War is a thing of the distant past. Famous last words. War is coming, my friend. It's just not here yet. We're, we're still a couple of years out. Even though you might not see me reveling with the crowds, I am grateful for this. Aw. As much as anyone. Say, uh, have you tried our latest product, <laughs> Fruits of the Festival? Yeah. If you have any thoughts on how it could be improved, I'm all ears. Aw. Any chance to chat with you, D. Luke, is time well spent, my guy. I appreciate you. And last, but certainly not least, we got our boy Razor. I am still baffled that we saw what his parents looked like. They spent their time on Star Snatched Cliff like true Mondstadt lovers. <laughs> Razor, how's it going, bud? The wind is gentle, comfortable. You wanna talk? Yes. About Varka. The message in the letter, I want to thank him. I miss him. Lupacall miss him too. Yeah, I miss him too and I've never met the guy. <laughs> now I am grown up. I want to hear him talk about human father and mother. Bro, oh my god! I just realized the second Varka gets back, that's literally like lore for his parents. God, I can't wait to get Varka's lore when he talks about Razor and he talks about Razor's parents. I can't wait, dude. I want to learn so much about them now. All right, friends. A long time ago, I thought I was alone. Only have Lupacall. Now, I know many people. Everyone helps me. I will help everyone too. Humans, wolves, everyone. Let's go. I am the bridge between city and outside. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, I'll be the I'll be the wild child that connects the city with the wilderness. Alright, here we go. About your parents. Their voices. I heard them. Human father and mother were adventurers. Yeah. Teacher said maybe they didn't survive. Aw, Razor. I have a wooden box. Inside are treasures from my friends. They are most precious things I own. Inside box from human father and mother is all about me. God, they loved him so much. I love this for Razor. I love this for Razor so much. Before this event, he was just like some wolf child that was raised by wolves in the wilderness with a mysterious past. And now he's Razor, son of two awesome adventurers, godson of Varka, that's my head cannon. And uh, he's got a new family now with uh, with all the people of Mondstadt. Oh, God, I love this event so much. Thank you so much, Hoyoverse. My crops are watered yet again. Overall chat, I really hope you guys enjoyed the event. I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary, my reactions to everything, my gameplay. I am a bit on a time crunch, so I do have to cut the stream short here. But thank you guys all so much for the support. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed both live on twitch and eventually when this goes up on youtube having razor back in my party was was great nostalgic learning about his parents seeing his parents and even like the other things that they added in there too with kaya and diluc were pretty impactful because we know that they have a straining relationship and we know kaya's situation is very different with him being you know having conria lineage and diluc's always down in the dumps with himself about his past and his father and how he's been handling himself over the years so i I really love how they kind of tackled a little bit of everyone's uh, childhood, if you will. That's everything for now. Thank you guys for the love. Thank you for the support. I appreciate the support overall, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care.